My name is John Martorano. Welcome to the webinar and thank you so much for tuning in today. We are very excited to have you. I am a solutions or an industry process consultant at Dasso Systems and SolidWorks, usually located in Waltham, but again, working from home like most of you, I'm sure are today. And uh, I'm sure you all by now, this is week six, are familiar with my colleague, Gian. Gian, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Hope you remember me too. My name is Gian Khaleesi. I am also an industry process consultant. Same title and credentials as John, just also based out of uh, the home office here. And very excited to, for, to give you this webinar today. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to turn off my webcam, and I just want to point out on the screen right now that you can see our results from last week. So if you are not last week, last webinar, so two weeks ago. So if you were with us on Monday, April 6th, then you would have been able to vote on what you wanted to see more of in the next webinar. And as you can see right here, here are the results broken down by percentages and by, you know, by a, a fairly significant amount. It looks like SolidWorks X Design and collaboration tools both took the cake on that. So that's what we have planned today. We're going to show you a little bit of our collaboration tool, 3D Swim, which we're actually looking into right now. And then I'm going to hand it off to John to show a little more X Design. So with that, um, let's just go ahead and take a look. So right now, we're taking a look at 3D Swim, our primary collaboration tool on the 3D Experience platform. And you can tell that right here, 3D Swim, S-W-Y-M stands for see what you mean. And that's really the goal of this tool is for everybody, you know, no matter what, why you're a part of a community, whether it's a team or it's a project, that everybody in that community can all get on the same page because we're all looking at the same information. And it's all it's set up like a web feed. You know, you can post all types of different things. You can just have a generic post. You can add 3D content, photos, videos, a we do, which is another fancy word for a task, ideas, questions, surveys, and wiki pages. But we're, we are really going to be focusing on ideas today. So, you know, when we first heard that, when we first saw those results that you wanted to see more of the collaboration tool instantly, John and I both thought, why not show them the process that we actually take to come up with ideas? So what you're looking at right now is a, is a community called Demo Development that only John and I are in. And this is where we do all of our ideation for demos that we give in the biweekly webinar. So you can see, usually we just post a picture and a little explanation of what we plan to use it with, but let's get a further look into the ideation process. So if I jump over to the settings to the community, we can go down here and we can see everything. So I can see every, every stage in the process that we've actually created here. I can add different statuses and change them and alternate the colors, whatever I wanna do. But our process as it follows, we create new ideas and just post them. So just like we saw, we post an image and a little explanation of what we were thinking. And then we'll comment back and forth or talk over the phone as we develop the concept. Then we move on to actually creating the data set. And that's the fun part. So that's the part where we get to actually use XDesign and XShape to build these really cool models that we then play around with in the demos. And then we move on to finalizing our picks and clicks, which is us just deciding what exactly we want to build live and how we want to show it to you so that you, know, you can get the most information out of that time and out of the demo. And then we have our last two statuses, demo ready, now practicing, and demo complete ready for reuse. So the only reason we delineate those as different is because we really try to not reuse the same content as much as we can. We try to come up with new material that nobody has ever seen before every single demo so to, to keep everybody entertained and engaged and so that you're always seeing something that you know you can't see anywhere else. But with that, let's jump back into our actual feed here. So you'll see it's set up like a web feed and I can filter by just ideas. So now we get a little, a short, a small little view of the funnel and how many ideas we have in each stage of the process. And I could go through and, and look manually to check, or we could jump right into this amazing graphical representation of the idea funnel or ideas pipeline itself, which is really cool. And then we can see all the ideas in our different process and say, I want to take a look at, you know, ideas that we're developing the concept for. So I can just click on that and show only those ideas in that phase. And when I'm ready to actually pick a demo to give, I can I can hover over over different ideas and I could jump right into them and see how that went. And you could see we already created that we already did the demo. It's complete. We can just jump right back and choose a new one, like the Hamatro spreader demo, for example. So this is 
uh, an older SolidWorks demo that we used to give that uh, with the help of some others, John and I have revamped for the 3D Experience platform. So, you know, I think that that's the one that we should give today. So I could jump into here and post a we do, which is just like a task. So if you were with us a couple weeks ago, we went over a little bit of the task management. Not to worry if you weren't with us, though, because you're going to see it all over again right now. So I just want to show you, you can post tasks through the community, or we can jump over to our collaborative tasks uh, application. So as you can see, I have plenty of tasks already in here. You know, we had to practice this webinar after we determined it. And now we have biweekly webinar episode six, which you're currently watching, is actually in progress right now. And then we have our ID8 for webinar episode seven, and that's in our to-do to column. So we haven't exactly started that yet, but don't worry, it's going to be a great show. So with that, let's go ahead and create a task. So I can add a new task right here, and we'll just say uh, give the Homatro demo. And I could just add it, or I can add it and open it and add some more information to it, how I'd like. So I could add a little description here, but John already knows what I mean. I just want to make sure that I assign it to him. So I can jump down to my assignees box and just search for John. And there we are. John, I want you to do this. And you know, if I had an attachment, I could just drag and drop it right here. I can change any of this other information. The only last thing I want to change is I want to make sure that the finish date is today, April 20th. So with that, let's go ahead and save. And yeah, that's your task, John. So I think we're just about ready for me to hand it off to you and show us what you got for X-Design today. All right. Thank you, Gian. Can you see my screen? Yes, we Yep. All right, cool. Awesome. So right here, we can see we have the Homatro demo at this point in time. Pretty um, cool demo revamped from SolidWorks itself. And well, it looks pretty much like it's done. But if we go ahead and you know hide a component, I can see that it's in fact not done and we need to you know add a different an additional component so let's take a look at what we're going to be modeling in x design today this is the component we'll be modeling it is um you know a part that you know the links come right in here and 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 uh we use this part to actuate the spreader arms the homotro spreader just a little bit of background on that is uh an, an amazing device you know, it's used in, in acts on the scene of an accident. The fire department would use it to help people who are trapped in cars um, get out by, you know, simply just removing the roof um, and using these powerful hydraulic spreading device. Um, so with that, let's just jump right in and go ahead and create our new component that we need to make this spreader. Jump over and uh, get a, a clean, slate of paper nice new fresh sketch right we'll go ahead and just use all uh from a, an array of 2d sketch tools that we're used to seeing right and right now we're just important to point out we're just doing a napkin sketch right nothing needs to be exact nothing needs to be refined at this point in time just basically having fun drawing right and you can see as i'm drawing these lines picking up our relationships there we can see the v for vertical and you know what i think it looks pretty good so at this point why don't we start by dimensioning this will change my sketch from blue to black oh just As like I solidworks this, just like solidworks exactly and so black indicates that our sketch is defined blue indicates that we can move it around so it's also important to note that i can also just click on a line here and uh, from there, I can actually just add the dimension that way as well. So I'll make that, say, 20. And go ahead and just, it's very easy just to go ahead and add um, dimensions, right? And if I want to make uh, these two circles equal to each other, we can do that easy. Now, at this point, we have some of the sketches black, but most of it's still in blue. And, you know, I thought I defined all of this. So how can I kind of go about solving this issue well if when in doubt i can just simply drag 
And I can see that, well, I have my center line there that needs to be defined. And you'll notice when I click on it, it automatically pops up with an auto dimension tool. Wow. This is very easy. And you know, if I enter in 50 millimeters, our de desired dimension right away, we can see that it's been added. So now let's just extrude this at this point. Go ahead and go mid plane to add material on both sides. And we can just specify what exactly the, uh, what we would like, right? Continue on, maybe add a fillet or a round. We can drag it in the graphics window. You can see that update. And if we want to specify maybe a more exact dimension, we can go ahead and select 30. And I can also select this hidden edge that you can see right here too. Um, go ahead and click the green check and everything's updated, right? Yeah, coming pretty along. Pretty fast, pretty easy. Coming along, right? Go ahead and choose a center rectangle tool at this point. And we'll go ahead and uh, just to create that cut that we that we saw that kind of goes through the middle of the the key looking component, right? And again, you'll notice if I click on a line, that auto dimension tool will pop up again, or I can click this dimension tool in the bar here and that'll pop up as well. I mean, there's just so many ways and it makes the tools very easily accessible. And right away, my sketch, as you can see, is defined in black again. Um, now I can click, drag into 3D, right? Pretty simple. You'll notice from the start here, I can choose very, something very specific. In this case, it's 54.16. But I, you know, if I want to choose a more exact measurement, all I got to do is just bring my mouse over to this um, to this ruler, and we can see that we can capture an exact measurement of 40 millimeters. We get that cut. I could open up the dialog box. No reason to. Just click the green check. Everything's good. At this point, maybe we want to add another round. And I want to highlight a really cool feature X design, which is called the selection helper. This selection helper um, pops up automatically, and I just have to click the green check. And you notice that it automatically selected the other edge for me. Now, you'll notice that that fillet has failed to create, and that's just because it's too big. That's my fault. So when I put it down to two millimeters, you can see that it's automatically updated. Go ahead, accept the changes there. Wow. And those fillets have been added. So X Design's smart enough to know that, that uh, I would want to select something like that. So we'll go ahead and create the bottom com uh, component in this piece, right? Which just requires us to do the same thing that we were doing before, pretty much. Just click and drag into 3D. And we'll go ahead and take advantage of our nice ruler feature. Wow. That was super quick. Go ahead. Yeah. Super fun too, honestly. I mean, it's kind of relaxing. You just hop in and model anywhere. It's pretty nice. So you'll notice I click the fillet. And, well, what if I want a chamfer? It's no problem. I can just switch that over real quick. Wow. Chamfer's added. No problem whatsoever. You know, clicking on faces and adding sketches is relatively simple. And we can go ahead if we want to. This part calls for a hole at the bottom. You can use our hole feature. And if you're familiar with the whole feature in SOLIDWORKS, this is pretty similar. You have a machinist library right at your fingertips, and you can go ahead and specify any sort of end condition that you'd like. In this case, I think it's set up to my liking. So we'll just use the sketch on the placement tab, and we can go ahead and click the green check. I can go ahead and now use a section tool available to go ahead and see just how much time that saved right off the bat. I mean, that would have taken, you know, at least a couple minutes to go yeah. ahead and draw on a sketch and revolve it. So these are the things that add up, right? These simple time savings add up and really just help us to become be better designers. We like it when a software makes us look good, right? Oh yeah. So um, we added another edge right there, another fillet. In this case, I can also select faces and you'll notice when I select these faces, we have a ton of fillets that we've added just in a matter of seconds. I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that was so, quick. Yeah, the last thing that I want to point out really is that you can notice that this is, John, do you notice the color difference here? It's a little bit darker, right? Yeah, it is. What's What's going on with that? Well, so 
actually, I added a material before we got started, but you can pull up a material catalog in here, and we have a variety of different materials you can choose from. Not only does it change the graphical properties, but if you wanted to run through a simulation, it also changes your physical properties for the component as well. So that's really exciting and, and super cool to have available in the cloud. Now, the last thing, actually, I lied before. The last thing, I noticed that I actually kind of made a mistake here. That's not really an issue, though, because I can edit this first component that I have and change that from 40 to, say, 30 millimeters. And it's not going to break anything it. downstream, John? Nope. As you wow. can see, everything updated exactly as you would expect it to. And uh, you know what? I'm happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and save out this component. and. Uh, I'll send it off to you at this point. So Perfect. let's go ahead and I can view the task that I have here. I'll go ahead and give this a refresh so we can see. Okay, cool. So we'll go ahead and get this task ready. Go ahead and put this in here. That's I gave it a refresh, so I'll go ahead and restore it. Sometimes the Wi-Fi, my Wi-Fi in my house is a little bit creepy, but. I think everybody understands at this point, huh, John? We're all yeah, suffering the so. same thing. <laughs> We're all suffering. Yeah. So basically now at this point, I can go into my life cycle tab and we can pull open our life cycle tab where I can go ahead and drag this into the tasks, in which case I can actually get this um, down in the deliverable section and add a deliverable for you. So we'll go ahead and do that again for you. I can now not only drag, you know, in between tabs, but also attach this as a deliverable. I'll go ahead and do that and save that out, Gian, and we can just uh, drag this in the done section. And now, when we do this, um, Gian can basically go in, take a look at the component. He can now update and see the changes that will go ahead that I that I made to the part. And you know, as the project manager, he's the one that's going to be in charge of kind of creating this component, right? Or like overseeing the creation of this component. So if I didn't do a good job, he's got to tell me. And you know, just a little bit of a hint, because you know, I may have done this demo a time or two. He's not going to be happy with the changes that he sees. So maybe we're <laughs> going to have to uh, make some changes in the future. What do you uh, say, Gian? Have you some to take faith, a look? John. Yeah, I think I'm ready to take a look. I have a little faith yeah. in your design skills, though. I'm sure it's okay. You guys might have just missed. I just dragged the part over that John sent me here, but uh, we're already looking at it here. So I just want to go ahead and bring that into full screen so that we can take a look and see how John did. All right, so this top geometry all looks great. All It all looks good so far, but it does look like we're missing something here. So there is supposed to be a little bit of a groove here at the bottom because this part is actually going to be completely restrained from a, by a, a retaining ring at the bottom of this kind of shaft area. So, you know, one of the great things about this, uh, what we're actually looking at right now is 3D play, and it's a separate viewing uh, application on here. And it's not just for 3D content. You can view PDFs, PowerPoint, really m almost any file you can think of, you can view with 3D play. But it really comes in handy in the situation where maybe I'm a product manager for this and I don't need access. I don't want to pay to have access to tools like X Design and X Shape that I don't actually need as the manager. I just need to be able to visually verify things and measure or whatever it may be. So what I could do is go over to my tools here and I'm just going to go ahead and show this area that looks like it's a little problematic for me. And ooh, look at that nice little rectangle I put there. For ooh. Me. Yeah, so now I'm just going to let John know that there needs to be a groove for a retaining ring here. So I can go ahead and just drag this note wherever. I'm just going to drop it right there and validate it. And now I can jump back into my tools and I can go to 3D Swim. I can just click this and it takes a screenshot if you just saw that quickly. 
Um, and now we're making sure I'm posting it to the right community. And I'm just going to say, uh, John, we need a small change here and refer to the image. I can publish that and it will show up in the community for John to be able to take a look at and go let us know that we go go and uh, make that change for us. So if I jump back to my communication, you'll see that was posted immediately. I can see it here. So with that, uh, I think it's time to give it back to you, John, so you can go ahead and make that change now. All right, let's, uh, let's see what you got. See what I got here. Did my screen, you can see, can you see my screen? Um, I am unable okay, to see, oh, there we go. Now I can see it. There we go. Okay, so all I did was just switch over from the demo dashboard over onto the swim page. You can see Gian's post has been updated right away and I can see that, well, okay, I did forget that retaining ring, didn't I? Well, yeah, a little bit, John. Lucky for me, very easy change, not a problem at all, right? So again, we're just picking a sketch plane, entering into a sketch. And I think I'm gonna tackle this by making our evolve cut. So we'll just start with the center line. I can turn this one click, turn this uh, into a center line. And we'll go ahead, maybe, now we'll use a center rectangle. Center rectangle, okay. Yeah, I'm getting, getting crazy here, right? <laughs> So what are you doing there, John? Ah, I see well, now we're doing. just basically retaining. Yeah, we're just basically creating a retaining ring, and now we're just doing the same thing that we were doing before, just further defining this and getting it into a, a position where this is fully defined, just for best modeling practices, right? Beautiful. So we're we're good there, right? Yeah, that's a black sketch. So, so. now I can do. Exactly what I did before, John. I could just click and drag this into 3D. Wait, but isn't that? And you might be like, well, yeah, yeah, right. It's an extrude, <laughs> and what would this do right now? If I click the green checkbox, it would just, you know, put a giant block in my part. Well, if I open up the dialog box, we can go ahead and change that. This is our super feature, so I could change this from a cut, and you know that helps. But we still got a cut in the part. But now we can choose this or change this from an extrude to now a revolve. So now we're in business and all we need to do is just select that. Wow. Access the revolution. See right away, it's generated a nice preview for us. We click the green check and we can verify that boom, we have created a new retaining ring. I'll go ahead and wow. save this component. And the beauty in the fact that this is the same part, I don't have to update um, Gion's task at all. Um, it, it's automatically going to um, update that deliverable in there. So I'm going to trust that Gian, for our time's sake, he's going to be happy with it, and we'll go ahead yeah. and get this assembled. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I want to see this. I want to see this in action now. That one, I made you. I made it look too easy for you. You did make it look a little bit too easy. Now, as you can see, I took a little bit too much time yapping. So I'll just go ahead and open up the whole matro again. No big deal. All right, here's our assembly. We go ahead and hide some planes for us. And now if we want to insert this component, we can go ahead and just search for it. That's the beauty of data management, right? So I'll go ahead and search. In this case, I know I just tagged my initials at the end of this component. I'll go ahead and insert this component. That's the beauty of data management wow. on the cloud. Because if you don't know what it's called, there's no big deal. It's no big deal whatsoever. All you need to do is just basically search and you know drag it into place. It's it's really simple. So as you can see right there, we're adding mates at this point. And what I just did was just click faces. You can see that we need to flip it around, but that's no big deal either. So there is actually no mate command on the platform. This is really super awesome because it's just very helpful. We don't need to think about worrying about searching and finding a make command. I can just click two faces. Works all the same if I want to make two faces flush by adding a coincident mate as well. Wow. Just Very to really easy. drive home that point, let's go ahead and make a parallel mate at this point. Wow. 
Wow, John. Awesome. We're almost there, huh? Getting close. We're almost there already. We're getting close. So now we just need to add a couple more mates. Again, we're just clicking faces. And finally, this last link mate, right? Yeah, let's see it. Let's see how it behaves now. Let's do it. I'm excited. So I can pull this back and wow. forth, and you can see that it moves exactly as you would expect it to. Beautiful. Now there's just one little part. Yeah, it looks right? like some you pins. Need a pin. Yeah. But I think you made one, right, John? Can yeah, I just search I, made, for I it? made one for you, John. I just got to throw it in. All right, let's do it. Let's go ahead again. We're just same as before. Drag, drop, insert that component. The option on the left is to open the component if I want to open it up separately itself. And we'll go ahead and just get this all made it up like we did previously, right? Same thing. Wait, so John, are, are you going to be adding each of these mates individually? To, like, are you going well, to have to? I mean, I guess I could do uh, that, right? But yeah, do you, you think could. Maybe what if I use the copy with mates command? I think that might be a little bit easier oh, for us today. Right? Yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's I think cool. it's a great idea. Too. Oh, that's a super so, cool tool too. Available to us in our assembly tab to really help us with this is called the copy with mates component. So all it is basically you just select the component that you want to copy. And uh, from here, it obviously pops up with the number of windows uh, relative to the number of mates that exist in the component. You select the window um, and I go ahead and select the component. You can see um, when I select the, the cylindrical face, automatically creates a, a pop-up preview for me. Oh, nice. I'll go ahead and just wow. click and drag. We're just clicking faces. I could click the green checkbox, but we want to copy and repeat. So let's go ahead and do that again. Super simple. Wow. We could do this with just clicking faces. It's, Super intuitive and obviously saves us a ton of time, right, Gion? Yeah, tons of time. This would have taken way so much more time if we did this individually yeah. for each one. Wow. Cool. And uh, with it. that, right Beautiful. at noon time, we have wrapped up. We can go ahead and hide or show rather the other half of the yoke component. And we can see again that it behaves exactly as you'd expect it to. So not only have we gone over how we go ahead and present these demos to you, we also went ahead and did a, a home outro demonstration to kind of utilize and show some of the um, the creator tools on the cloud. So with that, I think, Gian, you have a survey, right? Yes, you value I your feedback. Do. Oh, very, greatly value your, your feedback. So just like we started off today, uh, showing the results of last week's. We, we are going to, right now, we just launched a poll, and I want everybody to vote and let us know what you want to see more of. And, and it could show up uh, in our next webinar. It could be in a few weeks from now. But whatever you personally would like to see more of, go ahead and give us a vote, and we will do our best to add that into a future uh, webinar. So at the same time, this is also a great opportunity for you all to fill out the question box with any questions that you might have, um, you know, in regards to the 3D Experience platform or just in general about our webinar. And we are going to do our best to answer those. And any of those we can't answer right now, we are going to follow up with you individually via email to get you the answers that you need. So yeah. with right. that... Well, yeah, I'm looking at the question box. We do have about four or five of them. We don't have time for four or five. So let's just, let me just ask you this one, Gian, and then we'll be respectful of everyone's time. Yeah, we did. Close up the survey. We'll a little get it wrapped today. up. So this one is an important one. So are all these parts modeled on this platform? Gian, I think you can answer that for yeah. us. Yeah, uh, that's an easy yes, yes. Everything that you see uh, in our demos on the 3D Experience platform was completely 100% made on the platform. Cool. All right, and uh, I think it's 12.02. We stole a couple extra minutes of your time today. We definitely appreciate you guys sticking around and being uh, very interactive and asking those questions. We'll get those questions answered and uh, out to you ASAP. So with that, uh, if you'd like to try the 3D Experience platform for free seven days, there's a link in the chat. And we'll also send up a follow, send out a follow-up email. Um, thank you guys very much for tuning in today. and. Uh, 
Jan, I think that's all, right? Yep, that's all, folks. Thanks again, and stay safe out there.